This is a brief presentation going over CSEP certification and professional membership options. One of the things that makes CSEP unique as a certifying body is that we also have that exercise science academic side to the organization, which benefits our professional members. A common question we do get is where do CSEP professional members work? Um, they can work in a variety of settings, including private consulting, um, the Canadian Forces, RCMP and, and local police forces, university college fitness facilities, rehabilitation clinics, high performance labs, preventative care programs, the commercial fitness industry, and community centers. One of the nice things with CSEP is your certification does include your professional liability insurance, and so that gives you a lot of options on where you can work as well as independent work options. CSEP offers two professional memberships, our CSEP Certified Personal Trainer and our CSEP Clinical Exercise Physiologist. Um, both of these prescribe condi conditioning exercise, provide exercise supervision and monitoring, healthy lifestyle education and outcome evaluation. CSEP CPTs work with individuals to meet their healthy lifestyle goals using an evidence-informed approach acquired through post-secondary education. The CSEP CPT scope of practice is working with apparently healthy individuals or those with one stable health condition, and it expanded in recent years to include working with all age groups. The CSEP CPT scope of practice is limited to some maximal testing and prescription. However, there is a way with the CSEP high performance specialization um, that CSEP CPTs can do maximal testing and prescription. Um, and there'll be a bit more about that specialization later in the presentation. CSEP clinical exercise physiologists work in clinical and fitness set settings applying advanced education skills and experience to improve and maintain the health and quality of life of individuals, including those with chronic conditions. The CEP scope of practice includes individuals and or populations with medical conditions, functional limitations, or disabilities, including those with musculoskeletal, cardiopulmonary, metabolic, neuromuscular, and aging conditions. CSEP CEPs can administer any evidence-informed assessment protocol available, which would include submax and maximal testing. So CSEP certifications are recognized as the gold standard. Um, recently, we did um, in the past year, get some, some really good external validation um, to the value of our certification. So CSEP uh, has an agreement with Sports Scientists Canada, Own the Podium, and the Canadian Olympic Paralympic Sport Institute Network um, in a partnership where future uh, exercise physiologists working within the Canadian Sport Network are required to have their CSEP CEP certification and that the CSEP CEP certification becomes a requirement in the Sports Scientist Canada accreditation as well. Um, and CSEP also was re recently uh, recognized as a recommended credential in British Columbia for qualified exercise professionals looking to work in BC's healthcare system. To be eligible to take CSEP exams, you must apply and have your courses reviewed. Um, so the, the application requirements differ a little bit between the CSEP CPT and CSEP CEP certifications. For the CSEP Certified Personal Trainer, the academic requirement is two years of full-time study or 60 credits at the post-secondary level in the field of health and fitness. Um, so that could be a two-year college fitness diploma or that could be two years of a kinesiology or exercise science degree. Um, and there are six core competency areas that, covered, that are covered through academic courses. For the CSEP CEP certification, because you're working with an expanded scope of practice um, and clients with more clinical conditions, the requirements are, are a little more um, intensive. And so the academic requirement is graduation from an undergraduate degree with at least 120 credits in exercise science, so a four-year degree um, with 120 credits. Now, if you are in Quebec and um, you started your degree at a, a CEGEP and then transferred into a university, that is acceptable as well to count um, both of those towards that kind of four-year degree requirement. And then for the CSEP CEP, there is a practical experience hour requirement, 100 are required hours, and then CSEP recommends 150 additional hours with different population groups. And for the CSEP CEP, again, because it is a, a more expanded scope of practice, there are eight core competency areas, which are covered through academic courses. Um, and unlike the CPT, you can also meet those core competencies through 
practical experience or independent study. So we try to make it easy and we've broken it down into five steps to becoming CSEP certified. Um, and so we'll just go through those steps right now. So the first step is getting ready. Visit the CSEP website to view the requirement for exam eligibility, review the list of core competencies for the certification you're interested in, and prepare your required application documents. Um, so transcripts, letters of recommendation, etc. So we do have some certification tools that help you um, plan your courses and also kind of get, get the material and the information required for your application together. So on the left here is a, uh, a recommended course map. Um, that's a CEP recommended course map, which it has the core competencies on the side. And then for an individual school, this one is a template, so it doesn't have a school in it, but it would have the course codes and the course titles at that school that CSEP recognizes to address those core competency areas. The other tool that uh, we do have that can help is a logbook template. So if you are collecting your um, recommended experience hours on kind of from different areas and you want to put it into that template, you can do that with your um, application. Your other option for your recommended hours is um, if they're provided in detail in your letter of recommendation, we will accept that as well without a logbook requirement. Step two, applying for exam eligibility. So you do have to apply before you can take your CSEP exams. So we recommend you apply two to three weeks in advance of the exam that you want to take to give us time to review your, app, your application. Um, and we do recommend you consider this when, again, when you're planning events. Um, the application is online. You can find it at the CSEP website. Application fees for CPT are $50 and CEP are $55. We do recommend you have all materials prepared to apply in one sitting. Um, so that you can upload your, your transcripts and any other supporting documents at the same time that you submit your, your application. So the third step is to prepare for your exams. Um, once you are approved, if you're applying for the CSEP CPT, the Certified Personal Trainer Certification, you must purchase the CSEP PATH Manual. Um, many students will already have this from um, courses throughout their um, education. This is a required manual. Inside the CSEP PATH manual is a card uh, with a code. The code allows you to um, download the toolkit uh, off the CSEP store website for the um, CSEP PATH manual, but it also allows you to, to book um, your theory exam. There's uh, skill review sessions that are optional um, that you can take. These are particularly helpful if you're not currently in a course that has a lab component that um, directly relates to either of the certifications. Um, just a great review ability before your practical exam. And for the CEP certification, it particularly is helpful to um, get you some time in the lab um, doing the things you're gonna be tested on. Recommended CSEP resources on top of that. So we do have a certification guide for each certification. Um, it includes information all the way through the application um, process, uh, tips for both exams, practice theory exam questions, um, lots of information there. And then there's an online learning library, which there is a series of candidate preparation modules um, for the CSEP CPT. That is a lot of practical exam preparation for the CSEP CEP. Those are modules um, on a lot of clinical conditions and pharmacology and and core competency areas that you may not be as strong in that you want to review before challenging the exams. And then step four is, is the exams. So um, for both certifications, we'll start with CPT, but it's a similar format for both. It is uh, two exams, theory exam and practical exam. You can take them in any order if you're doing them in person. Um, if you're doing them if you want to do the practical exam virtually, we do recommend you do the theory exam first for CPT, and it is required for CEP that you do the theory exam before you do a virtual practical exam. So it's 60 multiple choice questions that test the six core competency areas. It's two hour exam. It's a 70% grade to pass. Um, can be completed at a Pearson View testing center or through Pearson View's online proctoring, which is the most common way that candidates will complete their exams. And there is a cost of $165 for the exam. 
The CSEP CPT practical exam is a single client scenario, the seven assessment areas that evaluate the practical application of the core competencies. It's broken down into stations and the stations are pass fail. Um, and so if you don't, if you only miss one station, you can retest one station. Um, but if you don't pass multiple stations, you would have to redo the entire exam. Our practical exams are delivered by CSEP instructor examiners. Um, and they're available both in person and virtually. You can choose the order you take the exam for CPT. You have two attempts at each exam to pass. If you're unsuccessful after your second attempt at either the theory or practical exam, so you've taken two attempts at the theory exam, for example, um, you do have to apply for your third attempt. That application process is just to ensure that you're not taking them sequentially um, and that there is a study plan in place um, to ensure success on the next attempt. You have six months from the date you pass your first exam. So whichever one you pass first, you have six months to complete the second and then register as a new member. And then for the CEP certification, again, very similar, although as with the core competencies, it's a, it's a bit more expanded just because there's a lot more populations. Um, that you're expected to be able to work with. So it's 120 questions that test the eight core competency areas. It is a three hour exam. The exam includes five case studies, three clinical population case studies, a healthy population and a special population. Um, so a special population would be a population that's not necessarily clinical, but may have a special consideration to it. Um, something like um, a client who, who's pregnant but may, maybe doesn't have a clinical complication with their pregnancy um, or something like that. So that would be what a special population is. It's the same threshold to pass 70% again through, through Pearson View Testing Center or online proctoring. The practical exam for CEP is a little bit different than the CPT practical exam in terms of structure. So it's a two hour exam it consists of three scenarios covering the 19 sub-core competencies. It is the same in terms of stations and pass-fail. The thing that's different is it's not one client that you're working with. Um, it would be very unusual for one client to kind of fit into multiple clinical populations at one time. Um, and so at certain stations, the client scenario may change and you may be working with a, a different um, client scenario than the previous station. Again, we have CSEP instructor examiners who deliver the CSEP practical exams. And there is a virtual option as well as an in-person option for the practical exam. So you can choose the order you take the exam with the caveat that if you're starting, if you wanna take the, the practical exam virtually for CEP, you do have to have your theory exam completed first. You have two attempts at each exam, that's the same. And again, the six months from the date you pass your first exam to pass your second at register. And then the fifth step. Um, it is in here because people do forget the step. Uh, so your last step is to register with CSEP to become a CSEP CPT or CEP uh, certified professional member. Um, this is an important step. Until you complete the registration step, you are not a CSEP CEP or CSEP CPT. You do not have insurance. Um, so it's definitely important not to forget that step. When registering online, you'll need to provide proof of first aid, proof of CPR that's not expired. Um, so you have to keep your CPR current as a CSEP professional member. Um, but you may see in previous documentation something about renewing it every 12 months. That's no longer the case. It just needs to not expire. Um, and when it does expire, that you renew it and an official transcript. So when you applied, you could have sent unofficial transcripts, a screenshot from your student portal, and we'll accept that on application. But in order to register, we need official transcripts with the final grades for the credits that you use to apply with. And then the CSEP membership fees. So the 2023 membership fees were 260 for CPT and 295 for CSEP CEP. Maintaining your certification. So if you, once you obtain your CSEP certification, you must renew your CSEP membership by March 31st each year. Your CPR level C must be valid um, and you renew it when it expires. Um, and again, not every 12 months anymore, just every three years when it's going to expire. And then you must earn CSEP professional development credits. So we operate on a two-year cycle. 
for CSEP CPTs, they collect 20 professional development credits every two years, and CEPs are required to earn 30 professional development credits every two years. Um, after the two-year cycle is over, a selection of members will be um, chosen at random um, to be audited to ensure that they have completed those PDC requirements. Transitioning to CSEP CEP. So oftentimes um, someone may kind of in the first two years of their, their program um, or when they're starting out and they really are not going to work with clinical populations decide I'm just going to do my, my CSEP CPT and that's great and then down the road maybe they complete their four-year degree or there's a new professional opportunity where they would like to upgrade to CSEP CEP and work with clinical populations. So you can do that. It is the same process as just becoming a CEP already, or from scratch, um, that we just went over. The difference is, you know, keep your CSEP CPT certification current, and then when you go to become a CEP, you'll just pay the difference uh, in the two membership fees. So you're just paying the difference in the insurance costs between the two um, that first year. So you won't have to double pay, but you also don't have to let your CPT lapse if you're just about to get your CEP um, and it's renewal time. So CSEP does offer specializations, and as mentioned kind of at the beginning of this presentation around um, submax testing and prescription for CSEP CPTs, it is the CSEP high performance specialization that allows our CSEP CPTs within their insured scope or practice um, to prescribe maximal testing and prescription. And then as well, we have our CSEP pre and postnatal exercise specialization, um, focusing on working with clients um, from preconception through to the postpartum period. So some professional member benefits. Um, a huge one is the professional and general liability insurance um, that covers your scope of practice. Many certifications, their membership fee does not include insurance. Um, and as an independent person who may not have a certification or may not have a Canadian certification, um, to go out and try to seek that level of insurance on your own is incredibly expensive and often even difficult to to obtain as an individual. Um, our professional members have discounts online and in-person professional development opportunities. They have access to the latest research resources um, and all the great academic um, support that, that CSEP offers. There are professional member specific awards and grants you're eligible for. Um, and credentials to help you get the job. So as we mentioned with the Canadian Sport Institute, the, um, the Canadian Forces Morale Welfare Service, and, and BC Health, these are some major employers who are requiring CSEP certification um, when hiring for, for openings and job opportunities. So some ways to stay connected. Um, so we do have some active social media channels. Our candidates are mostly on kind of Instagram, I think, for the most part. Um, I also would note that info at csep.ca is a great email address for anything CSEP, any CSEP questions you may have. Uh, it is monitored by staff from all departments. It is the fastest way to get a response from us if you're not sure who to send it to um, or you're not replying directly to an email that has been sent to you that's going to get you a great answer and as quickly as possible. So that would be my recommendation is um, if you have follow-up questions, definitely um, go to info at csep.ca and send, shoot us an email and we're happy to, to reply. Thank you.